Hey everyone, this is James with WSTrades.com. I want to talk about avoiding false breakouts. So I know a lot of us have been trading and we're looking at a chart, we see a key level, maybe it's a trend line, maybe it's a resistance or a support level, and then we see the price break through that key level. And it looks like, all right, this thing is finally busting through this key level. Let's just say it's a key resistance level. It breaks above, it closes above that level. And you're just thinking, hey, this is a great long setup. The buyers have finally taken control and you know they're pushing this thing through the trend line or through the uh, resistance level. So you, know, you get your break. Let's just say the candle closes above that key resistance level. You go long and then sometimes the next day, if you're like trading the daily time frame, which is what I have pulled up right here, the next day, I mean, the market just completely reverses. Um, the sellers step in and the thing closes below that uh, resistance level. And then, you know, sometimes it has a fat sell off and a big move down and it might actually test some other uh, previous support level. So I know that's happened to a lot of us and maybe you're looking for a way to avoid those type of false breakouts. I just want to talk about one method that I use to avoid false breakouts. So let's take a look here. This is a perfect example right here because um, this was a trade that I got into on ticker BIO, which is BioRed Laboratories. And uh, you can see I drew out a key level here. So let's zoom in a little bit on the chart here. So you can see um, they had this fat gap down, this huge sell off after earnings. Um, and they made this move below this area of about $388. They sold down here pretty good to about 358 or so. They rallied up and you could see they had several touches of this level. Um, so right here you see a wick sticking out, testing that level, not able to close above it. You see this candle right here opened right at that level and then it sold off hard. And then we've got three candles in a row, um, you know, wick sticking out and really testing that level, but just not able to get above that level around 388 and close above it. And uh, you know, this is going back to early May. So this thing for several months was just kind of going sideways, consolidating, and you see another touch of the level right here. Uh, this is mid-June. Uh, you see this thing gapped up and then had a fat sell-off, rejecting that level hard. Um, and then right here, early July, July 7th, it tested that level again. Uh, so this time it finally broke through and that's one of those situations where you see, boom, the price finally breaks through, it gets a close above that level. Um, you wanna go long there, right? Cause it's finally getting above that level and closing above that level. But how do you know that the market will not immediately reverse? Um, and this is one thing that I do. So before I actually went long uh, and placed this trade, um, I waited just one more candle. So sometimes if you just wait one more candle, you can see in this situation, are the buyers still controlling the price action? or will the sellers step in immediately? Because you know, like I said, this happens where we get this break, this close above the key level, and the next candle we'll see a gap down or we'll see a big sell off and we'll close immediately below that resistance level again. And right here you can see that the buyers um, the next day remained in control and we got a nice big momentum candle there. Um, and this thing closed much higher. So right here on the seventh, we see a close around that 389 level or so. Uh, sorry, on the 10th, and then right here on the 11th, we close all the way up at 396.20. So you can just kind of see a big move up there. So sometimes if you just wait one candle, you can kind of see, are the buyers and sellers still battling it out? Are we kind of going sideways or do we go in you know the opposite direction? So um, of course uh, we wait and we see that. So I went long and it was around what, 395 or so. It's where that candle closed. So I was like, okay, I think the buyers are gonna pump this thing. And you can see as soon as I went long, the stock starts to trek sideways. We get a gap up, but it sells off. We get a pretty indecisive candle here. Um, sellers try to push this thing all the way down to 392. Buyers step back in, kind of rally it, leave a wick sticking out. And then this candle right here, you see a massive bearish engulf. Um, this thing sells right down to that key resistance level. So I was watching this thing and I was like, okay, we haven't closed below the key uh, resistance yet. But if we do get a close below this level, you know, I'm going to start to think about exiting the position because we might be selling off to come down here and retest around 356. Um, so the next candle right here on July 18th, we get the close below that key level. 
Now again, a lot of times you might see, oh man, the sellers drove this thing through this key support level. They closed it below that level. You know, I'm gonna go short. Uh, this thing's gonna die. But if you just, again, when you get that close above or below a key level or a trend line or you know a support resistance level, sometimes if you just wait one candle, you can kind of see if it's a false breakout or a fake out. And in this case, it was a fake out indeed because you see the close below the level. Some people might be thinking, oh, I gotta get out. You know, this thing's gonna die. And you can just see, boom, big bullish engulf candle. This thing closes up at 397.44 on July 19th. We got a little bit of a sideways uh, price action here or a pretty indecisive candle. And then uh, today was just a gap up and a massive rip. So now it's trading up around 4.15 uh, it looks like right now. So that's one method I use because a lot of times you will see uh, these type of false breaks and these fake out situations. And this is one way, um, you know, or one method that I use to avoid those. Uh, you know, if you subscribe to Wyckoff Theory, you know, he talks about the composite man, you know, shaking out retail, faking people out. And sometimes the sellers will do this stuff. They will make you think this thing's gonna die by pushing it just below a key support level. And a lot of retail traders will see that and they will exit. They will think, oh man, it broke the level, that's it, I'm out, this thing's gonna die. And then as soon as they close their position, they might even go short after closing their long, boom, the market just reverses and goes the other way. Um, so, you know, if you get yourself caught up in some of these false breakouts, um, you know, hopefully this is one method that can help you to avoid uh, some of those false breakouts and maybe give you a little bit more confidence when you want to place a trade. In this scenario, you know, you went long and then the sellers, you know, immediately tested that uh, previous resistance level, which is now a support level. And, you know, this is one way to handle it. And this is one way to avoid some of those false breakouts. Please like this video. Please also subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. Hit that notification bell. Appreciate you for taking the time to watch this. Talk to you soon.